And now the Grand Prix Circus travelled on across the Southern Hemisphere to the final race of the year at a completely new venue, Adelaide in South Australia. For many Formula One people, this was their first visit to Australia and it gave them a chance to meet some of the local inhabitants. Carlo Chiti of the Minardi team seemed to have found a long-lost relative. Certainly the family resemblance was striking. The circuit itself was superbly laid out on public roads and was enhanced by excellent facilities, efficient organisation, a huge crowd and a highly dramatic race. To confirm the qualifying story of 1985, Senna took his seventh pole position out of 16 stars, an extraordinary achievement. But once again, Nigel Mansell was on the front row with him. Prost, on the second row, now had no championship points to worry about. But there was quite a battle over who would get third place in the final table between De Angelis, Rosberg, Mansell and the pole man, Ayrton Senna. So that's the beginning of the Delight Grand Prix. Uh, I was on pole position, having Manso beside me. We were all very worried with, about the first corner with a potential accident, but Manso took well the lead. He did a good start, and um, I had to drop to second place. But uh, three corners later, I saw a spot, and I went for it. Everyone was clear on the start. And now you see that I tried the overtaking maneuver by the inside and there was room for only one car. So when Nigel tried to keep up by the outside, we had some moment there. But that's racing anyway. So Keck took the advantage of that moment to take the lead. And then on the straight he was already clear from me, as you see there. And the main thing on that track was to keep the brakes alive, especially at the beginning of the race with the cars with full tanks, 45 gallons of fuel and uh, with a lot of heat so tires and brakes were the critical thing there in Adelaide at the beginning of the race I kept together with Keki for several laps but then I started to have some rear tire problems and I dropped a little bit in the meantime Manso on the first lap stopped with some problems and then later Frost takes Oboreto, who was with some rear tire problems. And two corners later, Sura does the same thing. So Oboreto lost two positions in two, three corners. Eh? So Frost was lying third ahead of Sura. And that was Elio, who was um, black flag from the, from the organizers and Jones didn't have a, a very good race there. He was doing well through the race, but then had a mechanical problem. And Prost, the same. The engine failure, as you can see, a lot of smoke there. But anyway, it was not a bad year for, for Prost. Really the world champion. So that time I was coming to Keke again and I did a mistake there. Hit the, the curb under brake and then went over the other curb having a big moment. But the car held together nice, very strong car. There you see. I knew that there was a big runoff area there as I walked around the track two days before. So it really helped the situation at that moment. Then Keke slowed down dramatically when I never expect and I end up hitting him from behind, losing half of the airfoil. And at the same time he was in for tires. And it was a big, big moment, really difficult to control the car with half of the airfoil. So when I was coming to the pits, the car went straight on the corner. I just lost completely the front. And I lost not only the car, but the pit entrance completely, so I had to do an extra lap again to come in for tires and the new front nose. Sure, Wu was coming third, quite strong at this moment, had a moment with a back marker and uh, had a suspension problem, a tire problem. When I was coming to the pitch, Rosberg was already with me again, so as I slowed down very much to the inside line, uh, he, he, tried, he goes around the outside and takes me. 
So I must say, in that moment, the mechanics, my mechanics did a very good job. In 25 seconds, they, they only not changed the tires, but also the front nose. And the car was handling perfect, like the beginning of the race, after this repair. And when I come back on the track, I was then lying third place behind Lauda and Keki. And uh, with new tires, so I had a very quick pace and start to push Lauda. And eventually I, I go through him on the straight, but with my rear tires grainy or red, so I was losing speed at that, at that time of the race. And later Lauda fight back and take me again. At this moment, Kek comes for a second pit stop, so I take the lead momentarily. And um, Kek come back in third place, pushing quite strong. And Lauda then fight me back and take me in the same way as I did to him earlier. But for a very short time, because he had then um, some brake problems, and at the end of the main straight line, he he has a brake failure and, and hit the wall. But he was well with his car, nice with his car, with the tires. And at the same time, Keki was coming very strong with new tires. Now you see Lauda, ha he will have a problem there. The car just pulls to the left when he hit the brakes. So that was the end of it. The last race of Nick Lauda for 85. And then Kek comes very strong from behind, but um, he was also in some tire trouble already at that moment, so it would have been a good fight, I believe. But the, but the engine of my car expired at that moment there on the straight, so I slowed down, put my, my, arms, my arm up, so to let him aware that I was slowing down and avoid any further problems. And from there on, Kek just went away and had a, a nice nice win. My team still tried to repair the problem with the engine, but it was impossible. It was uh, uh, inside failure on the V6, and um, that was it. The engine was still running, but only in three cylinders instead of six. Kek then with such a good lead uh, decided to stop for a new set of rubber only on the rear to make the safe, safer race. And then the two Ligiers were fighting each other and on the last lap, as you've just seen, hit each other, nearly, nearly pushed themselves out. And then Kek then have a, a nice win, certainly a good way to finish a season and uh, a race which he really deserves to win. There you see the two Ligier drivers strife with the younger guy into Formula 1 and it's good to see young people coming on the rostrum giving a hard time to the old boys. So amid applause in southern Australia the long season is suddenly at an end. Rosberg's win had given him third in the championship by two points from Senna. And Prost's total of 73 points equaled Jimmy Clark's record of 22 years ago. In the Constructors' Championship, McLaren took the title for the second year on the trot, with Ferrari second, and Williams tied with Lotus for third, but took the place on the basis of the most wins. Alain Prost had finally taken the title for France after coming so near in the two previous years but eight different drivers and five different teams had shared the winning. From Brazil to Australia, 16 close-fought races in five continents, it had been a long and hard year, a vintage year.